Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Cretaceous, Notosuchians continued their radiation on the southern continents. We've already examined the dog-like basal members of this lineage in a previous video, and today I'll be focusing on the more derived and extensive Ziphosuchia clade, meaning blade crocodiles, referring to the thin slashing teeth of the carnivorous members of this group. In reality, Ziphosuchians were highly diverse, and also included herbivorous and omnivorous forms as well. Although the fossil history of these animals during the Jurassic is very poorly understood, phylogenetic studies have suggested that Ziphosuchians originated during the middle of this period, about 170 million years ago. However, only one genus has been described from the Jurassic, with this being the massive and predatory Rezanandron gobe of Madagascar. Although I'll describe this animal in more detail later in the video, but it is noteworthy to point out that this carnival was the sister genus of the Subecosuchians. This places Rosanandron gobe as among the most derived Ziphosuchians, which is somewhat surprising given that the animal lived approximately 167 to 64 million years ago. This means that the more basal Ziphosuchians must have extensive ghost lineages reaching back into the Middle Jurassic, despite first appearing during the Cretaceous. Indeed, the most basal members of the clade so far described first appear during the late Cretaceous in Gondwana, and are often highly unusual in terms of appearance and lifestyle. Among these was the genus Libicosuchus from Cenomanian age deposits of the Egyptian Baharia formation, dating to circa 95 million years ago. First described by famous German paleontologist Ernst Stromer in 1915, the fossil remains of this small terrestrial animal were thankfully spared from the Allied bombing of Munich during the Second World War. Measuring about 1 metre, or 3 feet 3 inches long, Libicosuchus possessed a very blunt, rounded snout, large eyes, and powerful jaw muscles. Although the skull was well preserved, the postcranial skeleton is known only from fragments, and as such it is quite difficult to determine what sort of niche this animal filled. The tall and robust skull suggests a diet composed of relatively hard objects, perhaps being a brown hyena-like scavenger, or even a specialised bivalve feeder. Living in a tropical river delta ecosystem, Libicosuchus dwelt alongside famous dinosaurs such as Spinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and the titanosaur Paralititan. Another bizarre short-skulled form was native to Madagascar during the Maastrichtian. This was the tiny and adorable Simosuchus. Measuring just 75 centimetres or 2.5 feet long, this stout little herbivore was built more like a marmot or gopher than a modern crocodile. With a very short, wide skull, broad tubby body, and maple leaf-shaped teeth, Simosuchus likely fed on low-growing plants such as ferns and horsetails. The back, tail, and limbs were covered in osteoderm armour. While the tail was unusually short and stubby, perhaps indicative of a burrowing lifestyle, the relatively inflexible armour coating would have served as protection for this slow-moving and almost defenceless animal, essential in an environment that contained the dangerous Abelisaurid Majungasaurus and the predatory Notosuchian Araripesuchus. The strangeness of Simosuchus can probably be put down to the fact that Madagascar was already a relatively isolated island during the late Cretaceous, leading to the novel evolutionary trends in the animals that lived there. In a more derived position on the Ziphosuchian phylogenetic tree, we come to a pair of sister taxa. The first of these is Pacosuchus, another small short skulled form, this time from the mid-Cretaceous of Tanzania. Possessing a lightly armoured body and strikingly heterodont mammal-like teeth, complete with pseudo-canines, premolars and molars, Pacosuchus was probably an active cat-like animal. However, given the occluding structure of the molariforms, this genus was most likely a herbivore, with the elongated limbs and slender body allowing it to run away from potential predators. Despite its name meaning cat crocodile, it is more helpful to imagine Pacosuchus as being a Pseudosuchian version of a basal ungulate or small modern pigs. Its close relative Malawi Sucus was a very similar animal, measuring about 60 centimetres or 24 inches long, and possessing comparable mammal-like teeth. Unsurprisingly discovered in Malawi in southern Africa, this genus was a semi-fossorial herbivore, a fact suggested not only by the well-muscled upper limb bones, but also by articulated specimens found in the remains of burrows. From these basal forms we can determine that early Ziphosuchians also likely possessed short, blunt skulls, 
flexible diets and were small in size, perhaps explaining their absence from Jurassic, Gondwan and fossil deposits. A more derived grouping within Xiphosuchia was the clade Xenodontosuchia, containing a remarkable diversity of forms. A notable lineage recovered by recent phylogenetic studies are the Sphagosaurians, which continued the trend of heterodonty and flexible diets. In fact, given their strangeness, these animals would not have looked out of place during the Triassic. Most were omnivorous to some degree, with one of the larger members being the genus Notosuchus. Native to the Santonian stage of late Cretaceous Argentina about 85 million years ago, this 1.5 metre or 4.9 foot long animal was a pig-like terrestrial omnivore, feeding on low-growing plants, carrion and small live prey. It was once thought that Notosuchus possessed fleshy lips and a snout, with cheeks useful for holding food inside the mouth for more efficient chewing, although more recent studies have argued against this. Another superficially pig-like form was Mariliosuchus, from the late Cretaceous of Brazil. About the size of a small dog, this animal's teeth were characteristically heterodont, although it has been suggested to have been semi-aquatic due to the sprawling nature of its limbs. These features are quite unusual for a Notosuchian, with the forward-facing eyes and nostrils at the tip of the snout indicating a relatively recent shift into this semi-aquatic niche. Following on, we come to the family Sphagosauridae, which contains up to eight potential genera and was endemic to South America, being especially common in Brazil. The basal Adamantina sucus was a small cat-sized genus with a short rounded skull, very large eyes and mammal-like teeth. Only known from a single partial specimen, it is difficult to determine what this animal was eating when alive with a potential omnivorous or carnivorous diet. The large forward-facing eyes suggest a nocturnal lifestyle making me personally lean more towards the second option. A close relative, Yakararani, was even stranger, native to the Turonian of Bolivia. Two individuals of the genus were found together in the remains of a burrow along with a fossilised nest. Measuring about 80 centimetres or 31 inches long, this animal possessed forward-pointing rodent-like incisiforms at the tip of the lower jaw, with the rear teeth adapted for cutting and grinding. Potential foodstuffs may have included roots, tubers, and burrowing arthropods. Another Brazilian genus, Sphagosaurus, was a small herbivore with somewhat peg-like teeth, while the well-known Armadillo sucus was native to the Campanian Maastrichtian boundary of the Bauru formation. Although Sphagosaurids as a whole were mammal-like animals, Armadillo sucus is especially mammal-like in that it had heavy body armour characterised by flexible bands and rigid shields that covered its back less like the traditional osteoderms that lined the backs of most pseudosuchians, and more like that of a modern armadillo, hence the genus name. An omnivorous and possibly fossorial genus, armadillosuchus could probably have used its large caniniform teeth to defend itself from predators, which, given its two metre length and strong neck muscles, could have delivered a powerful bite. Moving past Sphagosauria, we come to the lineage that would lead to the Sebecosuchians. Interestingly, the most basal relative of these hypercarnivores was actually a herbivore. The genus Chimerasuchus was recovered from early Cretaceous deposits in China, which in itself is unusual, as Notosuchians were very rare on the northern continents. When remains of the animal were first described, it was thought that its molariform teeth belonged to a large multituberculate mammal. This similarity was strengthened by the four forward-pointing teeth at the tip of the snout, giving the animal a buck-toothed appearance. About one metre or three feet three inches long, this herbivorous Notosuchian fed on low-growing ferns and cycads in a humid subtropical forest environment. A surprisingly close relative of this strange herbivore was the massive apex predator Rezanandrongobe of Middle Jurassic Madagascar. Known only from a single fossil specimen consisting of a fragment of the maxilla and associated teeth, this was enough to demonstrate that the genus was by far the oldest known Notosuchian, predating all others by 74 million years. The surviving fragments of the jaw are enormous, with powerful serrated steak knife-like teeth, useful for slicing through flesh and perhaps crushing bone. These adaptations are similar to those of the later Sebecosuchians, with the original paper describing the genus suggesting an estimated length of 7 metres or 23 feet long making Rosanandrongobe the largest Notosuchian so far known. With a potentially robust build and a mass of between 800 and 1,000 kilograms, or 1,800 to 2,200 pounds, 
this animal was an apex predator and would have competed with larger theropods for prey. The remains of Rosanna Drongobe were found at the Isalo III formation, alongside a variety of other poorly understood genera, including the basal sauropod Archaeodontosaurus, the Turiosaurian Narindosaurus, and several indeterminate theropods. These sauropods probably provided a substantial portion of Rosanna Drongobe's diet, although it is not known how this Notosuchian would have competed with the theropods in its ecosystem. At around the same time, during the Middle Jurassic, the predatory Sebecosuchians must also have diverged, although these only become well represented in the fossil record during the late Cretaceous. With their central hub being South America, the Sebecosuchians would be the only group of Notosuchians to survive the KPG extinction event, terrorising the continent well into the Miocene, although that is a story best left for another time. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be focused on the Smilodontin saber-toothed cats. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.